E-bikes just got banned in a town in Florida after a 12-year-old boy riding an e-bike collided with a 66-year-old riding a regular old bicycle. And unfortunately, she died. Um, this ban needs to be talked about. So here are all the details. Within hours, the mayor of the town of Key Biscayne in Miami-Dade County called an emergency meeting. I have called for an emergency council meeting to propose an immediate ban on all e-bikes and e-scooters on all streets and sidewalks under the village's jurisdiction. I will be proposing an emergency ban on e-bikes and scooters effective immediately. This is a time for all residents to come together as a community as we grieve this terrible loss and stand to protect protect each other and care for one another. Concerned residents packed the council chambers in support of a total ban. Village officials said that they were trying to address micromobility devices like e-bikes and e-scooters, which some have said are a safety hazard because they can go 25 or 30 miles per hour. We're gonna get into this, but at this emergency meeting, a mother told the council, This shouldn't be in the sidewalk. It shouldn't be driving by kids. This is a little weapon for kids. And a village resident who pointed out that the woman who died wasn't wearing a helmet and that the boy who lived was wearing a helmet was booed by residents and escorted from the room. The lady died because she was not wearing a helmet. <laughs> Which wasn't pretty. Following this emergency meeting, the council approved the 60-day ban, which took effect immediately. And now for this ban to be voted on unanimously. And may I ask them? Yes. We need to address the car-centric attitudes towards bicycles going on here. Folks who protested e-bikes so much at the Key Biscayne Council meeting following just one fatality involving an e-bike did not protest in the same excited manner about the hundreds of other traffic fatalities that happened in just last year in Miami-Dade County involving automobiles. I'm not trying to minimize this death at all, but like seriously, check this out. According to their own 2023 full year road crash statistics data, Miami-Dade County had 359 road fatalities last year. But <laughs> I can't make this up because look at these stats that are provided by Miami-Dade County. A closer look reveals that only some of the 2023 road fatalities, 21 to be precise, involved bicycles. And if you're familiar with these types of stats, the involvement of these 21 bicycles was probably when they were struck by automobiles. Even more, 63 fatalities involving motorcycles, which are historically more dangerous than any other mode of transportation out there, were involved in collisions when they too were most likely struck by automobiles. And keep in mind, the majority of the 359 total fatalities also known as dead friends, family members, and loved ones involved automobiles. Yet despite the higher number of fatalities involving automobiles, there has been no outcry to ban them. I know, <laughs> it sounds silly because of the autocentricity of America. It seems that when it comes to e-bikes, all it takes is one fatality involving an e-bike to justify the decision to ban all e-bikes outright. If we were to apply the same hasty logic used in this e-bike case to all vehicles involved in fatal collisions, you'd come to these conclusions. Key Biscayne should immediately implement an emergency 60-day ban on all types of vehicles involved with fatal collisions, including all automobiles, just to be consistent. With all of these banned automobiles off the road, the streets would, in fact, immediately become safer and lives would be saved. By consistently banning all cars, the village of Key Biscayne would prove that it is not biased towards any particular mode of transportation, such as cars, but rather is just consistently applying the same rules to all modes of transportation. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Key Biscayne being consistent across the board, instead of being very targeted in their bans. Let's go over the blame game being played here, because most people naturally don't want to change their habits, especially if it makes them get out of their comfort zone. It's easier for them to just blame any discomfort they feel on something 
or someone else at the first opportunity they have. For example, even though bicycles are inherently safer than cars and trucks, most people who are used to driving their cars everywhere don't want to switch to bicycles. It's a lot easier for the residents of Key Biscayne to blame an e-bike when a fatality involving an e-bike occurs, even if we don't know yet if the e-bike or its driver were to blame. Or even if that e-bike involved in this collision was an e-bike at all. Because all of this footage in these news videos almost exclusively show what look like e-motorcycles. Also known as gray zone e-bikes that should actually be registered because they can travel at speeds up to 45 miles an hour or more actually, instead of the 28 mile an hour limit set out by the state of Florida. Anyway, the result of one fatality, including an e-bike, even if it's not yet known if the rider of the e-bike was to blame, is e-bike protesters coming out in droves demanding an authoritarian e-bike ban. Oh, the land of the free, right? Thanks, America, for your consistency, as long as it is convenient to you. In contrast, hundreds of fatalities in Miami-Dade County involving cars and trucks in 2023 barely elicit a yawn from these same residents. Like, flies right under the radar. Non-existent. They don't care. One mother attending the council meeting said that an e-bike is a lethal weapon for kids, but does that make an automobile a lethal weapon for adults? Well, actually, yeah, but that's for another video entirely. A quick reminder, if you've watched this far, give this video a like, subscribe, and engage in the conversation below. I'm sure it might get heated. Now we should probably address the helmet situation. It's interesting to note that the 12-year-old boy who did wear a helmet came out of the crash with only scratches, while the 66-year-old woman who didn't wear one unfortunately died. Now, this is not to say that the woman would have necessarily survived with a helmet, but the example of the unfortunate village resident who mentioned the same helmet issue at the council meeting, only to be booed and escorted out by police officers indicates a mob mentality there. These residents didn't want to consider any factors that might lead to a safer environment for riders if it might be inconsistent with their ultimate goal, to ban e-bikes because wearing a helmet for riding a relatively slow, light, safe bicycle is a very American thing to do. Again, that's another video, but helmets, they can protect you. I mean, blunt trauma, they will obviously physically protect you. But there's actually a lot of psychology going into the helmet debate. So again, that's another video. We'll get into it. Kind of irrelevant in this case. Now this, this is much more relevant. Speed and killing power. This is just another factor we need to talk about. The concern raised by village officials was that e-bikes go way too fast up to 25 or 30 miles an hour. Let's get the facts straight though. There are many different classes of e-bikes, and this is really important. And many in Key Biscayne aren't even e-bikes. They're electric motorcycles that are in the same category as literal highway-worthy motorcycles that are gas-powered or whatever. It doesn't matter, but they are motorcycles. That's what matters. Just because they're silent, don't make them e-bikes. Here's an actual breakdown of e-bike classes. Class one is pedal assist only, so no throttle at all, with a top speed of 20 miles per hour. Pretty good. Class two e-bikes are pedal assist with the addition of a throttle and a top speed of 20 miles an hour. Class three e-bikes have a top speed of 28 miles an hour with a pedal assist only. You can only go up to 28 miles an hour while you're pedaling, so it's an assist mode. It will cut out after that. And the throttle only, I believe, goes up to 20 miles an hour. Motor vehicles, on the other hand, can go much faster. Combined with their increased weight and higher speeds and much worse visibility from the driver's seat, motor vehicles make for ideal killing machines. So, banning lightweight bicycles that can only go 20 to 28 miles per hour, while not banning heavy vehicles that can go 100 miles an hour and do so much more damage, and often do, seems like they're focusing on the wrong mode of transportation here for their banning spree. And we haven't even talked about autonomy for youth yet. The problem with car-centric culture and a car-centric mindset is that it creates car dependency among our youth. Kids can't be autonomous if they're dependent 
on their parents to get around. Urban sprawl and hostile streetscapes are what cause kids to stay home. Quick aside here, soccer moms are a common phenomenon here in North America. I think a lot of you know this, but it's a term for being slaves to transporting your offspring to and from places that children ought to be able to travel to on their own once they're of a middle school age. Don't you think? Well, a lot of people don't. Instead, you have, Mom, can I get a drive to Fred's house so we can hang out? It's ridiculous that that's a regular occurrence in North America. That That's so, like, just go out the door and walk. Oh, wait, you can't because there's a highway in your way? Yeah, that is a problem. And then the boomers have the gumption to say, oh, kids nowadays, uh, all they do is stay home and play video games and scroll on their phone. Yeah, no sh they're stuck at home because they have no autonomy. What? Like, okay, refocus, all's good. Actually, it's not, but anyways, <laughs> just continue with the video. You know what? No, urban sprawl and hostile streetscapes are what cause kids to stay home when their movement is so bloody restricted without asking mommy and daddy for a ride to the mall so they can hang out and socialize with their friends while not being run over by vehicles. This is why getting a car in North America has been a coming of age story and a sign of freedom because you don't have freedom of mobility until you get a driver's license and a car and can drive yourself. Before that, just mommy and daddy have to get you around. But now, the reason that e-bikes have taken off in a big way is that kids and their parents are realizing that e-bikes give you that freedom as a kid. E-bikes are literally changing the way people are getting around globally. Like around the world, e-bikes are taking off for a huge reason. It's a huge and great change for everyone. And it's insanely good for the mental health of so many people. I mean, the kids and their parents. What parents want to chauffeur kids around? But all of this does come with growing pains and we need to recognize that and change things like investing in safe, protected infrastructure for vulnerable road users. So for pedestrians and cyclists and e-bikes, all of these and all of the other micromobility devices as well. Okay, getting back on track here, according to Key Biscayne locals, because of the way infrastructure is set up here, almost every kid in Key has an e-bike or e-scooter. But now thanks to the e-bike and e-scooter ban, all of these kids lost their mobility and autonomy overnight. Well, specifically at noon when this went into effect. How would those same baby boomers feel if their autonomy was suddenly taken away due to a ban on all cars due to one car being involved in a fatal traffic collision? Actually, two of those things happen all the time. Uh, baby boomers are losing mobility and they're losing their licenses because that's a thing. So you're taking away future freedom when you get your license revoked because you are no longer fit to drive. So that's a whole other video, but the baby boomers in question would probably feel the same way as the kids feel about their autonomy being taken away from them due to the ban on all e-bikes and e-scooters based on one e-bike that was involved in a traffic fatality. Now we cover car brain. The excuse to get rid of these pesky little e-bikes, they're little toys, who, who gives a about them, eh? Sad to say, but drivers hate everything and everyone outside of their vehicles. There's just this, ah, there's this horrible thing that happens to humans when they get behind the wheel of a motor vehicle. Everything and everyone becomes an obstacle and everyone is in their way. But the crazy thing is that e-bikes are not toys. We've been talking a lot about the mobility of children just because this case involved a 12 year old on an e-bike, but e-bikes are a valid, amazing, environmentally sound mode of transportation for everyone. And they reduce noise pollution and actual pollution like whoo -hoo. A lot of my family here in Canada ride year round for over 80% of our trips and only drive occasionally. We're spread out across Canada too, not just over in Southwestern Ontario. That's great for everyone because it means less traffic for everyone. But e-bikes do come with some growing pains, like I said before, like cities investing in safe infrastructure and protected infrastructure. It needs to happen and it needs to be repeatedly said because people aren't getting this. Speaking of poor road infrastructure, crashes happen all around the world. It's bound to happen, like it's a thing. Although collisions with smaller vehicles like bicycles and e-bikes are statistically less deadly 
and people get blamed when these collisions happen. But infrastructure never gets blamed or investigated or improved. Just look at the intersection of Hampton Lane and Woodcrest Road in Key Biscayne, where the bicycle and e-bike collision occurred. This intersection is in a relatively quiet residential suburb, but this intersection is freaking massive. Look at it. Like these stop signs are just asking to be rolled through, seeing as the stop lines are so far back that you have to creep forward to even see if anyone else is coming. So what happens with these collisions? Well, Cleanup crews sweep their wreckage away and everyone forgets the incident ever happened. Ta-da, done. Until the next collision happens in the same exact spot, almost in the same way. Again and again. Do you see a trend here? Do you see a problem? There are typically police investigations for insurance purposes, but nothing will ever be done about the road itself. Now, this is different to how the Dutch deal with traffic incidents. In other places, like the Netherlands, if a serious crash happens, the road is closed and there is a full-on investigation as to why the crash happened and what might be done to prevent future occurrences. This accounts for human error because humans are pretty dang prone to error. Like, we're pretty bad at driving. With that last bit in mind, that's what needs to happen here. A full, extensive investigation that doesn't only find someone to blame, but also looks at methods to reduce collisions of all sorts in the future. The only thing left to say is stop this man and deal with the actual problems, Key Biscayne. And if you've watched this far, like, subscribe, comment, and stuff and things, and bye!